if there's going to be a new GM, that yeah, I know that's that Herman Moore. Would be probably the most appropriate we'll have to wait till Herman's done. I know some of you have kind of pushed back against that theory, thinking that See, it's I, just another. That's what I said. I wondered where all the buttons were. And that's, that's really not the case. And, and I, can, I can easily clarify that. And here's the reason why. One, Chris Spillman is respected okay, by right. the organization, he's respected by the players, he's respected by the alums, he's respected by the fans. And when you come in and you have that type of respect from day one, that's a big plus for any organization. The next thing you have with him is the fact that uh, here's a guy who has played the game. Played we'll be started level. momentarily, he, people. He was in the booth like Matt Miller. Yeah, he was also a former linebacker like Matt Miller. But that's about where it begins. And ends. This is a guy. Who Good job, Herman. Does guy. Herman know that Matt Millen won Super Bowl? He's not going to accept losing. He said he's you played the game at the highest level. So our team, uh, I, I made more plays. More <laughs> I played sometimes hitting it with the Raiders and 49ers and with Joe Montana as your quarterback. Yeah, I agree. I had 17 quarterbacks. <laughs> you did. All right. I think that's the end of Herman. All right. All right. Here we go. For real this time. There is no previously today because Herman Moore is occupying the previously button. And we just heard from Herman Moore, although the people on the podcast didn't hear from Herman. Only the people watching on the live stream heard from Herman. And how I blessed plead, those people are. I <laughs> plead how blessed they are that they know what a great choice you'd be for NCM. Yes. Uh, I plead uh, busyness for the, my lack of attention to detail here on the podcast. It's. We're living in uh, pioneer times here at the Hooley household. Settlers. Without water, uh, because of uh, well issues, all is not well with the well. Yeah. The, the uh, charm of living in the country, but that'll be hopefully taken care of today while uh, someone digs a massive hole in my side yard. and uh, A gets city down folk to the, don't have to worry about No, that. you don't. You have city water. and You just make a phone call. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just know where the podcast uh, is on your list of priorities. Yeah, well, I just hope if you have to use the facilities today, you just cross your Bring legs. My own cross your legs <laughs> go and wait till you get home. Why don't I just go down to the barn? You can go down to the barn. Depending on what you need to do, yes, you can. Stars actually has better li living accommodations. Yes. <laughs> right now, Star does, yes, because we go and clean up after her. Star still living? Yes. How old is Star? Yeah, Star is probably 20. How long do horses go? I, I think horses can go 30 years. Really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, good morning, everybody. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of the Spielman Hooli We Tackle Life podcast. Yes, we are without water out here in the country. That's uh, just a Hooli issue, not the neighbors, thankfully. <laughs> We're borrowing water from the neighbors in buckets, but we'll get through it. <sighs> oh, well, okay. such a, it's such a pleasant way to live. Hey, hey Mom, really we're settlers out here. Yes, we are. The girls are, you haven't lived until you've lived in a house with four women and no water. <laughs> When's the water coming on, Dad? Yeah. Let's go chop chop. Let's go. Let's get it done. All right, uh, college football playoff rankings today. We have Browns against Titans. We have Bengals at Miami. And um, I don't know, what's new in your world, sir? Nothing. You're not wearing any – well, you are wearing a Lions T-shirt. Purely today. coincidental. Purely right coincidental? Now. Nothing new to report? No, I usually uh, – if I don't work out before I come over here, I mm -hmm. go home and work out. So I just grab T-shirts, and this was the one I actually – didn't even look and just grabbed it. So. Okay. No subliminal messages there. In case anybody's <laughs> watching from Detroit wondering if you're trying to send messages. I have no subliminal messages. No, you're, no, you're not very subliminal. No, I'm not. I, uh, you're pretty direct. Usually, yes. yes. Although right. some people would call my uh, answer to your questions on Monday deflections. Did they – Did uh, I didn't look in the Detroit media. Did, uh, did we get quoted or was anyone – no. no, no. I mean, Normally I, did a, couple, do I did a couple interviews. I did a, okay. some radio and TV up there. It's very difficult to answer that question because I, I don't have any information. And so I think my answer was, yeah, social media seems to be interested in the idea, which that's the truth. And so. So uh, for people who don't know, the Lions are without a coach and a GM and uh, Herman Moore, a great player in his era and Chris's era and teammate of Chris's with the Lions. Herman Moore went right to social media saying Chris Spielman would be the perfect GM for the Lions. So that's what we're talking about. Well, okay. and the only way that could ever work is that you you surround, or I certainly would make sure that I'm surrounded by people that are smarter than me for me to do the job at the 
level that it would need to be done. But, but there's a, um, you know, there is some benefit. And I'm not, look, I'm just saying the benefits of working for Fox. Mm -hmm. And one of them is you get to talk to so many coaches and players. And, you know, we do a pretty good job of, I don't really ask them football questions because the football questions I see. I, sure? I, yeah, yeah, I don't need <clears throat> to know what they think about that. Uh, I, I like to ask them questions about leadership and handling adversity. I mean, you know, how's your team handling a four-game losing streak, mm -hmm. you know? everybody going to go in a tank or are you going to keep everybody up how do you keep everybody up and so you do get a lot of information and, and a lot of information that i use to handle uh disappointing times or trying times in, in my life and so it's just you know that's i think that's the biggest growth for me as a person can i, I just go into this because yeah, yeah. i think it's it's a podcast so we can do whatever, we, do whatever want. we want um i think it's interesting when you're young as you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying this in a derogatory no. way, it's just truth. We're all cocky. Oh, man. We all think we have every answer there is to have. Then there's something in our life, and it doesn't have to be the humbling experience that I had, or, you know, your almost two-year journey that you've been on at your uh, in your 50s, mm -hmm. where, you know, there's a struggle, and you get humbled. Then... When you get humbled, you make two choices. You're stubborn, and you keep pounding away at a rock. Mm -hmm. you know? That won't break or move. Or, no, <laughs> or you say, there's a lot of wise people out, of it, out there. There's a lot of people that have, have do something that uh, is inspiring. They do something that uh, is uplifting. There's persistence. There's a better way. My way might not be the best way mm -hmm. all the time. And, and so I think for me, as I'm in my 50s, uh, I think the biggest thing I do is that I'm so open-minded at different ways. You would have to agree. I, I would, even how I broadcast games in the last 20 years, I've been doing this for 20 years, and there's a different way that I do a game now. I think there's, I instead of tell, telling people why something didn't work, I tell them why it worked. Mm -hmm. And it's just a different way of looking at things. And so being humbled and listening, and even if you don't agree with the person, it's still learning lessons. And there might be certain things that you still, well, I still like what that person does, even though I don't like the person, uh, his thoughts or uh, his philosophies. That one makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's been a, a big area of growth for me. And that's it. That's the encouraging, exciting thing for you guys out there no matter your age no matter where you are humble yourselves and nobody says you have to do anything but just be open and listen and you make the best decisions that you think are for you and that would work for you and those that you are responsible for yeah there's just a ton of uh people who look at life differently than uh you may be prone to do and it doesn't hurt to avail yourself of that viewpoint and then evaluate yeah. At the end. So, so that's that's the I think that's the blessing and the curse of social media mm -hmm. because you do uh, get some good thoughts and ideas on social media. But then you get people that um, immediately attack, attack, attack on yeah. social media and are very so close minded. And because they feel powerful because somebody liked what they said. Yeah. And I used to be m more prone to that now. Hopefully I'm a more thoughtful and measured. But, uh, yeah, it is easy to denigrate a person's point without addressing a person's point. That's my that's my thing on social media is it's just it's not having a discussion to call somebody an idiot, you know, like engage on the merits. Yeah. So uh, I I think the Lions thing with you is very interesting because I know you love the organization as anyone would who gave you a shot out of college and you had great years there and all that kind of stuff. And I know you want to see the lions do well, and I know you'll do everything you can to help the lions do well, whether that's to give yeah. them input or anything. Can I, I, my whole, I love what I do and my, you know, what my goal is I'm up for contract with Fox. I, I just, I'm hoping that I get a new contract offer with Fox. Mm -hmm. I don't have any reason to think that I won't, but TV business, as you know, is a fickle mistress, my friend. Yes, it is. Radio, <laughs> radio and TV, that's for sure. It is mistress meaning job or yeah. your, you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's just, you just don't know because it's, I, I like things very objective in my life. 
in scorekeeping. Mm-hmm. I don't like things that are subject. Yeah. And I picked a, um, a post football. Football is very objective. Either you're producing or you're not. You win or you lose. Yeah. That's the beauty of it, right? Yeah. And, and, but if anybody's out there that's in media, whatever type of media, it it just all depends on who's making the call at the time. It totally do, depends. On do they like you do or they like don't you like or not? Yeah. <laughs> do, do you do what they like or you know? Yeah. They may not know. Not you personally, you're right. Do yeah. they like your work? They yeah. like your style. They right. like your presentation. Whatever it may be. And so I do think, from a uh, analyst perspective, uh, I do think I'm a little bit unique in how I do a game I would and, agree. and how I see a game. And I hope the one thing that would come across to me when I do a game and to the people that make those decisions is that there's a genuine joy of me talking about football or genuine heartfelt passion. Like when, when, I, when that game is going on, like there's things that I say that, I, you know, that makes sense. Like I told, uh, when I saw, um, oh, Fletcher Cox from the Philadelphia yeah. Eagles, he was over in this, doctor or trainer was trying to put his pull his shoulder back in place and this was the uh, eagles game i did a couple weeks ago i I forget who it was against and i was reminded my dad when one of his players got hurt my dad would say go see a wizard over there get back get healthy and get back in there i said he's seen the wizard the next play like i I, and i then i thought that commercial wizard status wizard status yes (laughs) Yes. uh your joy does come across but you you love what you do but I was going to say, uh, so Fletcher gets his shoulder popped in and runs back out on the field. And how many times do you see that in this day and age? And out of the blue, it just came out. I love you. I love you. Because I do love him That's for right. that. That's so, how you would have done it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, forget where I was We've got Buckeyes, Bengals, Browns. Yeah, we have Buckeyes, Bengals, Browns. Congrats. Playoff. Playoff. Congratulations to Notre Dame. They're going to the ACC title game. The ACC did something You've, I've never seen before. They adjusted the schedule of their top three teams so that all three would end up playing the same number of games so they could make a fair oh, evaluation. I I, I, Notre Dame was supposed to play uh, Wake Forest on the road on December the 12th. They they removed that game from the schedule. It's not COVID. They just said, no, you're not playing that game. So they'll finish this week against Syracuse. Clemson supposed to play at Virginia Tech on Saturday, and they have another week where they could schedule a game because Florida State, you know, weaseled right. out on them. But they're not going to allow Clemson to schedule another game. Okay. That way, Miami, Clemson, and Notre Dame will all play nine games. If Clemson and Notre Dame win on uh, Saturday, they're, they're in the title game. And right now, Notre Dame is number two, Clemson is number three in the college football playoff rankings behind Alabama, and Ohio State remains four, although that was the big debate last night oh, was – Ohio State or Texas A&M four. So I looked at Texas A&M. Yeah. Their one loss is 52-24 to Bama. Ooh. Their best win is over Florida, 41-38. They finish on the road at Auburn and on the road at Tennessee. So I, I've watched A&M. I, I, Ohio State would beat them, yeah, in my I, opinion. I just, there's, look, Ohio State is still coming together as a team. Yeah. And that's what I'm concerned with about the playoffs because of all the delays and the hiccups, you know, there's a fine line. Like some coaches, even a regular year, some coaches love a bye week. Some coaches hate it. If you're rolling and you're healthy, you hate a bye week. If you need that bye week, then you embrace that. Happy. Bye week. Yeah. Um, definitely happy. Here, we're sitting here December 2nd, by the way, happy birthday uh, to Rick Spielman. Too. Hey, happy birthday, Rick. I got to text him. Remind me before I leave. Um, oh, speaking of Rick Spielman, yeah. we have a Facebook do message now? here. Uh, Nick says, imagine how big the show would be if Chris beat his brother as GM of the Lions. Um, I mean, we, this we, show is already bigger too because move, you're here. Nick, we would actually move this studio up to the living area <laughs> of the, the house. First, <laughs> up to the first floor. And we'd actually get water on the first floor. Could you yeah. imagine that, though? Battle I, can't, the I can't imagine the Spielman boys <laughs> competing as GMs. Now, that would be something to behold. Um, but December 2nd, we're sitting here. And despite the forces out there, we are going to have a college football season played, and mm-hmm. we are going to have an NFL season mm-hmm. played. And we had a high, at least here in the state of Ohio, mm-hmm. we had a high school season played. Yeah. And so it's not what everybody wanted, but everybody was creative. 
everybody um, did it responsibly. And I'm so grateful that uh, we were able to have it. Now, the Broncos quarterback room didn't follow the, the protocols, and they got punished for it. I was reading today that the Brandon Allen, you just did the Bengals game. Uh, the Bengals kept Brandon Allen isolated from Joe Burrow and what can I think? Ryan Finley. Yeah. They kept Brandon Allen away. Zoom meetings, even at practice, they didn't allow him around their quarterbacks because the NFL contact tracing is five minutes. I thought it was and, longer than that. Uh, sure. so I read it. Now that maybe they're going down to five. Five minutes in close proximity right. to someone else who tests positive. So they kept Smart. Brandon Allen away so that they wouldn't get themselves in a Denver Broncos type situation. And they also have. Uh, a spare kicker on their active roster, Austin Cyber. Cyber. Yeah, former Brown. Yeah, so that if Randy Bullock, if something happens to Randy Bullock, they can go to Cyber because they view quarterback and kicker as specialists that can't be duplicated. I, love, I, I think it's smart. It actually is surprisingly smart for the Bengals. I wouldn't I, have thought the Bengals would do that. Well, you know, that, for them. Uh, I forget the team, but was it the Eagles at the beginning of the year had Josh McCown living in Texas? Yes. On the team, but he knew the offense. Yeah. And for an emergency like the Denver Broncos had, he's ready to go. How about that gig? Being an NFL quarterback on the road, <laughs> living at home, living at home. Josh McCown's earned that. He's been with like half the league. Yeah, and he's a really, he's really super smart good guy. dude yeah. and a super good guy yeah. too. Man. And uh, you know, capable backup still. Definitely, at forty years old. He is league. a guy who could literally walk in off the street and learn enough of the offense. Give you a week. chance, not he'd a chance you, to win. He'd but give you, he'd give you. A, a reasonably proficient performance. Yes, I 100 yes. agree. All right. Uh, what about Herbie? Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's get to Herbie. I got to find the uh, sound here online, so we'll get to Herbie last night. But this is uh, Herbie we, said exactly what I've been saying. This shows that when you have a bully pulpit, you can't say stuff that makes complete common sense. Because how many weeks have I been saying exactly what he said? Yeah, that I Michi think that a Michigan. More, uh, Michigan. Well, uh, he has more. He has to be more careful, of course. Uh, but Herbie said last night basically what I've and been of saying. Course he's apologize. Michigan's not going to play Ohio State is what he said. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to give you, first of all. Do you think his buckeyeness came out of this? Yes, I think his buckeyeness <laughs> came out. I do. Now, just earlier today, it was right here in this story. And why is it That's not? right there. Are I know. I got the, the story, but I got the sound in here. We'll just read the. Uh, no, I don't want to read it. I want. Here we go. There you uh, go. Popped up the video. It took a while to pop up. All right. So here is Herbie's first comment. It's about 50 seconds long. It's about Ohio State and Michigan and the fact that he does not think Michigan is going to play Ohio State. I think a lot of people wanted to see where Ohio State would be. Uh, the, the concern on Friday and Saturday was Ohio State. Are they going to have to shut down their operation? Are they going to potentially miss the Michigan State game? Maybe miss the, the uh, of course, the Illinois game. Are they going to have enough to be able to play against Ohio or against Michigan? And, and, and are they going to miss the Big Ten championship? And, and how is the committee going to evaluate them? The fact that they played four games and they're still sitting there in the top four now it comes down to they were going to play Michigan State Saturday. I still think Michigan waves the white flag, potentially avoids playing Ohio State next week. And then, David, they'll, they'll potentially get a game on the 19th. They could be sitting there with six games. Um, and Michigan, is that fair, David? Michigan could opt out, basically, of that game and keep Ohio State out of six games to qualify for the Big Ten championship. That doesn't make sense to me. But There you go. Uh, so they wave the white flag and opt out of the game i would think this that he's just not going to make that statement off cuff i think he's going to make that statement because he's probably heard it for more than one he's, he's heard it here if he's been listening well i mean from somebody that might be a little <laughs> bit closer yeah to the maybe program. he heard it from me and said that makes perfect sense and uh, uh, really said you, think Ohio, you think Ohio State scared that Herbie provided Michigan the billboard, which the proverbial well, billboard? At least Herbie didn't go as far as I did, because uh, I've said Harbaugh and his players will be out licking doorknobs in order to get COVID. <laughs> yeah, well, you're. At the I would have to apologize for that, I guess. Is uh, this, is this is Herbie's apology then. Last Why do night, we have to make apology. Oh, he's yeah. just got to Herbie's got to make an apology. Yes, Dan probably made an apology. Probably Michigan fans out, you know, hue and cry. But here's Herbie later on last night uh, 
thinking uh, over what he had said earlier and uh, addressing it. Hey guys, um, just wanted to just uh, speak for a second about some comments that I made earlier tonight <laughs> on our college football uh, ranking show. Made, made some comments about Michigan, about the potential of them waving a white flag and, and intentionally trying to avoid playing Ohio State by just saying, hey, we have too many cases and, and we're going to opt out. Um, I had no business at all saying that. I have no evidence of that. It was completely unfair to the University of Michigan, uh, to Jim Harbaugh, to his players and coaches, and I just want to apologize. I think, if anything, um, I think we all go through some ups and downs, many downs for a lot of people during this COVID crisis that we're all in. And for me, um, in college football, I really struggle with where we are. Uh, players opting out, teams canceling games, uh, it, it just seems like it's a downward spiral. And, and I, I think typically I try to remain positive and upbeat. And I think sometimes we all have our breaking points. I think right now. Yeah, well, that's pretty much the spirit of what he had to say. He goes on for another minute. I think he did the apology well. He addressed the comments. He brought them up. He said it. And I think I agree with him. I think it uh, a lot of the stuff that is going on stinks. I hate the opting out by players. Guys play halfway through the year. Wisconsin Corner did it. Rashad Bateman at Minnesota's done it. I mean, you got guys who did it early in the year. Micah Parsons and those guys. It's like, I hate that. And I think Florida State did duck Clemson. And it wouldn't surprise me, and I won't apologize for saying it, if Michigan ducks Ohio State. Uh, I don't think there would be any coaches or players that would do that. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just – don't they know up there that they're coming down here and Ohio State, A, is motivated because of the rivalry. B, is motivated because they're still steamed over Harbaugh trying to get him in trouble with the Big Ten over Al Washington not wearing a mask mm -hmm. during a practice. And C, Ohio State needing to make a statement for the oh, playoff yeah. committee. And they will not show them any mercy. <laughs> and I do not doubt that if Ohio State is on that particular day and i have no reason to believe they wouldn't be i have no doubt that ohio state could score 60 points on them yeah i don't know if they can hold them it might it might know. be 60 to 28. i don't know what, what defense i mean defense has to get better and it has to get better in a hurry yeah. uh, and for them to go anywhere i think offensively they are talented enough to score on any defense it's just offensively, they got to get it going. And I think the offensive line just has to be a little bit more consistent. But, but that's the problem with only playing four games. But it's just interesting hearing Kirk talk about it's just a different mindset. And this is maybe where he's had his breaking point and players opting out and this or whatever he was frustrated with. And I certainly am on board with understanding his frustration. Mm -hmm. But I just was comparing – um what he said to what i said earlier and i'm only saying this because i think it's there's two ways to look at things what i say at the beginning is i'm so it's december 2nd we're going to have an nfl season in the college season it's not ideal it's not what everybody wanted but everybody kind of worked hard together and there's going to be some type of season from high school to the nfl yeah but the big 10 i think herbie's frustrated because the big 10 did everything they could. Did everything they could to not play. And you look at Clemson and the, and the SEC, and, and, the SEC and, they're the playing, and they're playing nine games with fans. Yeah. And the Big Ten is not allowing fans, and they're going to get probably six games out of their champion. And it does introduce a dynamic that I think the fact that the other leagues have done what they've done shows that it can be done. Yeah. And the Big and it Ten should have been done. And it should have been done. Yes. And even when the Big Ten decided to play, let's give them for the moment a pass on deciding very, very early not to play. When they decided to play, there was no reason they needed six weeks to ramp up and play. Stupid. They threw away two weeks right there that they could have played a more right. representative schedule. So, see, I think he's frustrated with all that. And well, I I, I'm, I, I, I'm. Everybody was frustrated yeah. with the Big Ten, but I'm, I'm, and Kirk's right, and and I, I'm speaking from the overall position of, I, I just think, and they have the money to do it. I was telling Kevin Kugler in the booth before the uh, 
game, Bengals Giants game last week, and he agrees. And Kevin and I are similar mindsets, I guess. And he and he made the point to me. Uh, he said, "Chris, this is week twelve. What a great job the NFL has done mm-hmm. to pull this off. Mm-hmm. You know, you got a game today. They're finding." A way today at like three forty five. Right. They're, they're finding yeah. a way to do it. And the Ravens had two more guys test positive today, and they're still playing. But the, and I was listening on the radio on why they're still playing. Somebody out there might not. Oh my gosh, they never to spread it. They're you know the contact tracing. They weren't in any vicinity of any player, and, and know that the uh, maybe uh, not for the Ravens or Steelers, but for everybody else, they they do a good job. Like they took a preemptive strike because of Thanksgiving holiday that. All offices were closed only for absolute essential personnel on Monday and Tuesday. So all the meetings and stuff were done virtually. Mm -hmm. And and so, look, and if all these protocols, I talked to a couple guys throughout the league. I talked to uh, somebody with the Giants last week, the Bengals. And if these, the, the protocols are darn good for the massive challenge that they've undertaken. And I think the, once the, uh, Bruce, once the playoffs get started, I think you're going to see uh, many bubbles to start. Then I think you're going to get bubbles for for these teams as as they progress forward. The one thing they don't want to do, and why you have the Ravens and Steelers playing tonight, is they they have the flexibility to add Week 18. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just don't think they want to do that because they want to have that week off before. The Super Bowl, and the other thing, it gives him a little cushion with that week off. That if a player did come down with COVID, he would be fine. And here's a uh, another thing too. Just did I read yesterday? And you might have had this on ninety-eight nine. The answer the Bruce Julius show five to seven. Thank you. Um, you might have had this on your show, but the CDC said now instead of like with close contact, instead of fourteen days, it's seven days. Yes. Did yeah. you? Yes. Did you know that? Yes. Or, or I don't have to write your show. For no, I got that. I got that. They also said that like 53 million people have had COVID, not near, way, way more than people previously thought. Which is based upon modeling. That's what's just good. Yeah, Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. And they said it was in the U.S. now way earlier than we thought. As I'm positive. I I know everybody's saying that. Yeah, I'm positive my daughter had it. And I think that's what's helped all of us avoid it. And we all have the antibodies. Yeah. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's. That's all good news, but we it's so hard to somebody to point out good news um, out there. But anyway, I, I just I am so impressed with the NFL. I, you know, not, not I'm not just I'm impressed with Fox. You know, like there's certain things that I wish I didn't have to do, mm-hmm. but I still do it. I still get tested, and they acknowledge that. You know, even though you can't get it. Well, that's the doctor, Chris. Yeah. What would why are you getting tested for something you can't give or something you can't give away? And I said, because it's they my ask job. You. And they tell me to get tested, so I get tested. I don't like it, but I get tested. Yeah, lots of talk about medical issues, of course, this time of year because it's open enrollment time for health insurance. You have two weeks, uh, December the 15th, final day. Don't put it off. You'll get swamped with Christmas things and holiday things and travel things and other things. But this is important. You have to pick the right health insurance for your family or for your employees or for yourself. And the good news is there is someone who can help you with it and that you don't pay any cost for that help. AUINFO.com, Chrissy, Steve, Julie, all the people at AUI, 17 people in the entire business, a family business, great business and a free service because health insurance companies account for the consultation fees of a health insurance broker in the policies. So it's already in there, no matter what policy you get, no matter what carrier it is. So it's free, but a lot of people don't know that. So when you go to auiinfo.com, you can set up an appointment, a Zoom meeting, a phone call, an in-person meeting via their chat feature, get the consultation, find out all the benefits, find out the differences in the policies. It's one click away, auiinfo.com, auiinfo.com. I have a question for you, my friend. Yes. Do you think it's fair that any college coach or NFL coach, NFL, yes, because I think that the, the, I, we said at the beginning of the year, people and organizations will be evaluated on how they manage COVID and uh, how they deal with mm-hmm. all the craziness of 2020. Do you think it's fair for any college coaches to 
be relieved of their duties this year. Yes, I think Derek Mason's firing at Vanderbilt is fair. Zero and eight. It's a hard place to play. Derek Mason's an outstanding secondary coach, by the way. Good. I'm just, I, I just maybe, you know, yeah. And uh, I the, think it's you fair. See where the young lady it's... won a special teams player of the week in the SEC. Come on, are you serious? Yeah, first girl ever to play in an FBS game. Let me just say how bitterly disappointed. This is not Chris Spielman talking. This is me. He gave me the news event. I'm reacting to it. Let me say how bitterly disappointed I am in the SEC, which I do not look upon as a league that traffics in political correctness. And um, giving her the Special Teams Player of the Week award is not merited by a squib kick. Somebody in that league, I'm sure, had a great week on coverage or returns or something that would be more deserving of that honor than her. But thank you for that <laughs> nugget of information. That, because just... I will expound on that when you're not anywhere near me this <laughs> afternoon on my radio show. On, well, I was uh, thinking, the only reason I thought of it is because I thought of Katie and mm -hmm. she can be a two sport. Uh, I would not expect her to win special teams player of the week if she kicked off like that. Did you ever take her out and try to have her kick field goals? She's got a strong leg. leg she's got she? a little strong leg. Yes, she does. You should teach her how to kick feet or get coach, get a kicking coach. You're all over the place. Well, did I tell you what she said Sunday morning? No. I uh, She got up Sunday morning and I to go to church. I said, do you feel empowered this morning? Like you can do anything? Mm -hmm. And she said, why? Because of an awful kickoff? <laughs> and once again. She was told to squib it. Once Your again, parents. any of you who want to be father of the year, forget it. I've. Iced it with that comment you know, my daughter. She was told. <laughs> <laughs> she was told to squib kick it, by the way. Okay, great. I, I just want to know, Katie, I, I would like to see her kick field goals. You never know. You never know. So, Again, good for her. I don't, Congratulations. I do not want to get you in any jackpot. I'm not. I'm, you're I'm not in any jackpot. Everything right. said that people would take umbrage to and want to cancel anyone over, I said. So that's how I'm right, going to proceed. Right. All right. Um, Browns and Titans. Man, I'm anxious to see this game just because. Let's go back to 1970s. Let's go back to the, <laughs> the 70s. I wish they could play this game in the mud. This would be a perfect game to play in the mud. Boy, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. Really good offensive They're lines. really going to be going at it. That's going to be fun to watch. Quarterbacks that are, are you know, they're not they're game top managers, 10, but they're, they're, game they're, they're pretty good. Yep. And you ask them to make a play when one needs to be made. Yep. Uh, just the. the uh, Old school physical football. Oh, I wish man. I could watch it. Actually, oh man, who do you have, by the way? Well, interestingly enough, as the football gods have it, the Lions. Do you really? And the, look, everything's lining up. Look at your brain. You will not you got be smoke coming you out of your not ear. Have a moment's peace up there. They'll all be looking for you. <laughs> Free game. There's nobody at this. You know, I'm there. To, Don't uh, the reporters come to the games? Yeah, but we're you're isolated. Yeah. They're all going to be trying to get you. No, there's nothing. No, I, they're I, all outside gonna be of Detroit, there's nobody talking about that. I know, but all the you're at, you're isn't it? It's not in Detroit. The no, game? no, it's in it's in Chicago. Oh, okay. Well, so. the lion don't the Lions send or don't the uh, Detroit papers send their reporters on the but road? Here's the thing: the press box is in the, at the suite level, so I don't go up to the okay to where you're. Well, they can still try to find you. I, uh, they're not allowed in. We have we have a security. We have two professional COVID testers. We have a COVID manager. Okay. They're not. Nobody's allowed in. All right. The the Cincinnati Bengals. Did I tell you this story? Well, I know the Bengals don't allow anybody in no. your booth, including yeah. family. That. Was, that oh. <laughs> Not, I, I not don't to bring up an that. old. Not to bring I, up I, an I, old I don't understand that, and I think I have the Bengals in Dallas. Uh, so I get to see the Cowboys in uh, two weeks. There. Is that in Cincinnati? Yeah. So I, I mean, Andy Dalton in Cincinnati? Red Rifle. Oh, baby. The Red well, Rifle returning. Me. But, um, I no, I, I think Fox has done a good job that they look at, for the announcers at least, they're kind of doing everything as regional as possible. Yeah, that's smart. smart. Which it, it is smart because they know, like, Laura lives in Nashville, so she can drive up from Nashville. Mm -hmm. I'm an hour and a half. They know I can drive to Chicago if I so choose mm -hmm. to, which I'm going to because I, I I just I don't want to travel with these papers and um well, you and I both have the homeland security yeah, letter. Yeah. yeah, and and well even the uh 
you know, our, our statisticians guy that sits in a booth with us, when he, we, he flew, he made that awful mistake of flying into New York Oof. Um, at LaGuardia, LaGuardia, and the National Guard was sitting there at the gate. Mm -hmm. Papers, please. Yes. No, sir. Papers, please. State of New Jersey wanted me to quarantine in New Jersey. They, uh, and they wanted me to give all my information out to them. Wow. No, thanks. I'm good. Yeah, you're good. And then, uh, so the Bengals play at Miami. That's not too exciting, really. I'm curious oh. about the Cincinnati Bengals sitting there with two wins. And we know they need an offensive lineman. Panay Sewell from Oregon would be a wonderful pick for them. Tackle. They'd have he and Jonah Williams, they'd be set on each side. Yeah. yeah. Can they be absolutely positively positive that they're not going to need a quarterback going forward? Yeah, I, I absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think Brandon Allen, look, for, for, not, for being isolated and for having two full practices, he did, he did okay. Look, Brandon's won a game here in the National Football League. I know that. I'm saying like Joe Burrow. I'm I'm talking well, about. I'm, talk I'm not talking about the short term. Maybe you don't have Joe Burrow for half a season next year. Well, he's, I'm talking back. about. Do you have 100 percent confidence that Joe Burrow will be just fine forever coming back? Well, I can't say that. I can't say that about you. I'm just saying you got access to. What do you want? What are you? What are you trying to say? What's? I don't I'm even know that it's cryptic. Just come out and say. Is he good enough? The or... No, no, no. I'm oh. not questioning. Is he good enough? I'm saying the knee injury can play with your mind. The knee no. injury physically could be something that he doesn't get over. Not I mean, look at Seth Downs, a place for Ohio State. He had a meniscus tear. He's been out two years. He's still not ready to go. Oh, I don't so, know. There's got to be something else that happened to that. Well, they that, said Burrow's knee was worse than they thought it was. And that's the outlier. It's worse than he thought it was. Okay, but if you draft, if you draft, let's say they draft I'm Justin sorry, Fields. Was yeah, you were. I am. Okay, go ahead. I got no. No, water. no, no. I got no water here. I'm a little edgy. <laughs> go ahead. I can't flush the toilet. Well, you want me to be back into our podcast as you sit in the Iron Throne, the Game of Thrones. Wrestling. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm telling you that. They don't look – doctors, players, coaches, management doesn't, doesn't look at ACLs like they used to look 15 years ago, okay? Yeah. Carson Palmer came back from two of them. Sam Bradford came back from two of them. Um, uh, there's so many quarterbacks in this league. Tom Brady, uh, we had a whole list of quarterbacks that was a whole television screen long. Mm -hmm. And – Joe's knee is worse than they said it was because there's MCL involvement. Now, I know this because Macy, my daughter, tore her ACL last mm -hmm. year with a small little MCL, but it's it's not a problem. She's probably now just getting back to being able to play game speed. She just mm -hmm. hasn't played basketball in two years on a, on a team. But for Joe, I have no doubt, and this is for you Bengal fans, I have no doubt that he's going to be the starting quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals on opening day next year. No doubt. First well, of all, I know who he is. Mm -hmm. I know how hard he will work. And as long as he doesn't have anything that he can't control happen to him, if it just stays uh, status quo as it is, it'll, it'll be no doubt. And I got to tell you, from my perspective, with what they've been working with and the loss of Joe Mixon, but that's the thing. And this is... Uh, Every here's the thing. I, I think I talked to you about this this year, but or last year, but this year, I go to uh, every league, every team, and I talk to both teams, and they don't use it as an excuse. But you know, everybody it, they've been decimated by injuries. They've been we, we've been decimated by injuries. We've been decimated by injuries. That's every year. Every year, and the team that manages that the best usually can win. And the team that keeps the healthiest offensive line usually is pretty successful. That's what I like with the, the New York Giants coach Joe Judge does. He he plays his offensive line a little bit like a defensive line, not uh, where there's a rotation. Not one guy may if there's 65 plays, one guy gets 45, the other guy gets 15 plays, but they're always rotating the guy in there so that they're prepared for that. That's a it's a pretty good philosophy as long as your production doesn't go down. I, I don't you know I, I I don't I don't go 50 50 it, but mm -hmm. I I do give that guy. Always give offensive line game reps. So, but anyway, 
teams that manage the COVID, teams that are a little bit injuries are luck too. You mm-hmm. know, very much. You so. can get decimated at a position, yep. but nobody should ever in the NFL use it as an excuse. It could be a reason, but nobody said, "Oh, we, we were injuries. That's why we didn't win." No, no, we're struggling, and you know, our our backups aren't uh, what we thought is. Even the Minnesota Vikings, they're not playing with one starter on the defensive line. They're all backups. Every one of them is a backup. Wow. You know, they, they have a couple injuries, guy opt out of COVID, they lose to Neil Hunter. You know, you can get away with that on a D line, not on an O line. Can't play all backups on the O line. No, no, that the Bengals that'll... have had to do that. Well, That's why Joe Burrow's out. I got to tell you, though, watching what they're playing with now and what Joe was able to do with that offense. He's really good, man. He is good, and they have really good receivers. Uh, they're they're receive. Uh, I'm, I'm not, you know, AJ. I think is is on the on the downside, but with T. Higgins, that kid's going to be really good. Mm-hmm. They get, you know, who they miss, and I think's a really good player. And we've talked about this a little bit. I mean, the kid isn't bad, but CJ Uzama was a guy that was coming on mm-hmm. too, man. I mean, right. They look really good early on. Uh, this is, of course, the time of year where you're looking for the perfect gift for someone, and it's awkward when you're buying a corporate gift and you want it to stand out, but you don't want to uh, waste your money and you know send something that people aren't going to be captivated by. Hemisphere Coffee Roasters. What office doesn't love coffee, and who doesn't love Hemisphere Coffee Roasters coffee? It's phenomenal. Mr. Spielman loves it. Everyone I talk to loves it. They've gotten many return orders from people who heard about them on the Spielman and Huli We Tackle Life podcast. We're appreciative of that. They have corporate gift packs ranging from $20 on up. So that would be something really cool to send. And they have holiday flavors like Java Jingle, Mistletoe Mocha, White Christmas, which is a blend of caramel, vanilla, white chocolate, and cherry. And they have a Christmas blend, which uh, they source from their growers in Ethiopia and Southeast Asia. Direct trade, they get it right from the grower, Indonesia, Thailand, other countries around the world. And when you, as a Spielman and Hooley listener, use the promo code WE TACKLE LIFE in all caps, you get 15% off. HemisphereCoffeeRoasters.com, HemisphereCoffeeRoasters.com. They have K cups, they have, they'll send you the beans, you can grind it yourself, or they'll grind it for you and roast it for you. So, HemisphereCoffeeRoasters.com. Spiels is drawing four names for our COVID 19 relief nominations. And we will get those uh, emails sent today. And, uh, the lovely and talented and extremely competent Carrie Spielman will contact you. Brian, who nominated Alyssa on November the 18th. Cheryl, uh, who nominated herself, and that's okay, in April, you, April 4th. Uh, Jeremy, who nominated his father, Jay, this week. And Rico, who nominated Vicia on October the 25th. Wow, awesome. So those are our four winners, $250 each. We thank Spielman CBD, uh, also known as or manufactured by CBD Health Collection. Yep. Thank Byers Dublin Mazda Subaru. We thank the Detroit Lions. Yep. We thank Mr. Spielman for selling a lot of his memorabilia. That's really cool to fund the $40,000 in COVID-19 giveaway and volunteer energy as well. All yep. Spiel's partners and sponsors and uh, really cool thing. Yeah, I, I, it is. I think we're going to take this. When did this? Uh, when did uh, I believe it Mr. began DeWine. in March? So, well, our COVID nineteen giveaways began in March or very early April. Okay. So yeah, that's what I, I thought. March for whatever March twelfth popped in my brain. But could be. Yes. I mean, yeah. So can I give my logic for why the Bengals might want to pick a quarterback number three? Because right now they're picking three. Okay. Okay. The Jets and the Jags picking one, two. So that's Herbert and Fields right now. Or not Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence and Fields. Well, we don't know if it's Fields. We don't we don't know that with the uh, BYU kid, the uh, North Dakota State kid, Kyle Trask, Florida. At any rate, there are I've a lot of see him. there are a lot of quarterbacks in this draft. Okay, so the Bengals sitting three. You can take a tackle. They obviously need offensive linemen. Yes. But they have Jonah. But they have Jonah Williams at left tackle. Yeah, and are you taking a right tackle at number three? Can't you find a right tackle? Uh, I'm not sure Jonah Williams is. He's had his ups and downs. This okay, year. so maybe Panay Sewell is left tackle and move Jonah over to the right I, side. I'm just saying, a quarterback at three. Um, there are people in the NFL always looking for quarterbacks. 
And if you have the quarterback at three and he plays half a season because Joe's not quite ready and he looks pretty good, what kind of value does that kid have? Yeah. You need immediate help and you need an immediate starter at three. And what well, could that quarterback fetch you on the trade I, market? I don't know. He hasn't proved a couple himself. stars. I, I'm just saying it's an intriguing conversation. Would I do it? No. no. Now, thank you. I wouldn't do it. You're but, no longer my assistant GM for making that suggestion. But I was never going to be your assistant <laughs> GM. I my job as assistant GM is to offer things for you to evaluate. So I'm doing that. <laughs> well, that at least. Hey, wait a minute before you heard that card in. What about this kid? <laughs> No, get out of here. So I'm saying I would not do it. But if it were Lawrence or Fields, I'd have to think about it. Well, if it were Trevor Lawrence, you'd do it. You'd do a draft and trade. Draft and trade, right? yes. But you'd sit there in that position. You'd throw that message out there that we're the Bengals. We do things our own way, have been since the invention of the. Now, here's what you could do if you're the Bengals. Bench. Go ahead. No, no I'm, I'm just going to sit out. I'm sorry. I'm just sitting out. Let's say there's a team at uh, 10 or 12 who'd like a quarterback who's on the board at three but won't be there until 10 or 12. Well, if you were to let me finish my point, that's yeah. what I was going to say. On draft day, that's when you try yeah. to accumulate as much as you can and you get the message out where the Bengals – we're going to draft Trevor Lawrence because we don't. And the simple message is, and people, not NFL people, shouldn't buy this, but the simple message is, we don't know about Joe's knee, mm -hmm. and that's the message that you get out. And then teams are like, "Whoa, wait a second! They're going to we take a guy yeah. that we want." So you, you know, you pick up, you pick up later another couple first rounders or guys in the second round. And remember, in the draft, once you get to, you know, twenty. To 35, there's not a big difference in the grades of level of players. No, if they're picking three, um, I mean, I know Penay Sewell is supposed to be a great player, but I haven't watched him, so I don't know. You can find, I mean, maybe you look at a team and see a guy who's already played. I'm just saying, I would look at it and say, could we trade with somebody and get a second or third year tackle and a pick that could get us a guard uh, in exchange for that selection. Because then I know the guy can play. I've seen yeah. the guy play for two or three years. Here, here's the thing I know about that offensive line, Bengals, is they got to get a starter in the draft. They have to. Do they have to get one in the draft? And, well, here's and I think they need one and be a free agency. Like it's, You can find a guard, center mm -hmm. guard. Tackles aren't – good tackles – Usually, unless you're really ready to bank, break the bank, aren't going to be available in free agency. Um, but they have to get another starter, and, and for that offensive line, and to my opinion, I mean they're they're improved. Actually, they they did a pretty good job of protecting Brandon Allen, except on the last play. <laughs> you know, where Jabril Jabal Jabal sheared mm -hmm. to the strip sack. So yep. I just think they need another starter at offensive line. I thought. I th and, you know, I think their secondary has done a really nice job. First of all, people are down on this kid. Games I've watched, he's played pretty well. I haven't watched all of them. Is William Jackson. I think he's fine. Uh, Von Bell has really played well for them, the leading tackler. I was talking to a guy last night. That, uh, they they wanted to, were interested in signing him in free agency. They didn't sign him. Mackenzie Alexander, it's Mackenzie not McKenzie, for those Bengal fans out there. I thought he's played pretty well. His improvement from the time he was with the Vikings to now, the fierce competitor. And don't forget, they have Trey Wayne's on the shelf for their other corner. So their secondary is fine. Two, a young, two pretty good young linebackers, I think they can get better. But their front four, too, there's no threat. There's no outside threat pass rusher. Sam Darnold is a rotation who's a great guy great player will play for 10 leagues some 10 years sam hubbard thank you um thank god i didn't call him sam darnold because i asked kevin did i just call sam hubbard sam darnold? and no he goes no but anyway sam uh is a rotational guy I, but he, he you know and for and he can be a rotational guy for 10 years mm -hmm. he's more of a first or second down guy he's not he doesn't 
threaten anybody off the edge because there's not that speed off the edge that you kind of would like to have. Because I, my theory and belief on defense, it used to be when I played, you build from the inside out. I, I'm a firm believer when you build from the outside in now in this league. Corners on in. Yeah. You know, corners to pass rushers, then you fill around, fill in around those guys. Yes. Uh, let's throw some uh, love to our legal sponsors, Willis Spangler Starling. They have uh, joined the party at 98.9 The Answer, so we're really happy about that. You will be uh, served with people who are Highly competent, first and foremost, but also people who have a servant's heart. And it's a good time to transition into the faith portion of the podcast. Because I was thinking this morning about what do we produce in our lives as Christians, as disciples. I did a talk for the FCA in Strasbourg yesterday on Zoom. And um, this whole push-pull between faith and works, faith and works. Well, our works are our fruit, but our faith should motivate us to produce fruit rather than like we have to produce uh, fruit in order to qualify. We're already qualified because of Christ. But I thought about, you know, Stan and the people at Willis Spangler Starling, and so much of life can be consumed with, uh, am I doing what I should be doing according to God's will? Well, it just, that's kind of a, I struggle with that for a long time in my oh, life. Oh, I know you have. Yes, sir. But then I thought about the fact that God gives everybody different abilities and unique gifts and stuff like that. And the gifts he gives you you can then use to serve others, and that is your fruit, how you serve others. Stan Willis and his wife, Kelly, and the partners at Willis Spangler Starling, they're fascinated, intrigued, equipped, talented in the law. And that's how they've built their firm is a way to serve others. Hemisphere. I mean, I, I couldn't begin to know how to contact a coffee grower in another country, but Paul was a missionary. He was gifted in relationships and stuff like that. And so now they've found the gifts God gave them as a way to serve others. Chrissy and Steve at AUI, all our sponsors. And you you do that in the National Football League. You've talked about producers coming to you. Hey, I noticed you go to church and stuff like that. Yeah. Like the, our actions, our attitudes, our service to others is our fruit. That's the evidence of the faith making a change in us, of us understanding what Jesus did for us. And that it's not, it's a compulsion sounds like a a burden. It's not a burden to serve. It's a privilege to serve. And the thing that I've found, and you were talking about leadership early in the podcast, the essence of leadership is realizing that your priorities individually are secondary to raising others, like increasing others' capacity, serving others, the servant leadership players you talked about the other day when we were talking about the lions and you have to get players as a leader you have to get players to understand that you're about getting the best out of them to help them succeed only mission that's the only if you can if you can get everybody to buy into that whether you're a law firm or a coffee company or a football coach or whatever if the people that you're leading can understand that you're about them. And that's why Jesus was the greatest leader of all time. He got 12, yeah. he got 12 men, and I always say 12 men in a boat, to build the, the most transformative force in the history of the world. Because what did they know? They knew he loved them. They knew he cared about them. They knew he served them. He washed their feet at the Last Supper. He's the king of come to earth and he lowered himself to serve others. So that whole servant thing is common to our sponsors here on the podcast. And it's yeah. really common to great leaders. Great point. I mean, that's tremendous and great message. Uh, good reminder for me too, because we, sometimes I'm such a rockhead. I need help from listeners out there. I, I need your prayers for something that, I struggle with and without getting into detail I'm kind of I you know like most people there's certain things that you struggle with anxiety wise not to the point of needing treatment or counseling or medication but something that really affects sleeping mm-hmm. or it's very frustrating because it shouldn't little things that bother me that shouldn't have that big of an effect on me or, you know, and I, you, you 
try to pray it away. You, you try to you try to put everything in perspective, and it's just not working because it keeps coming back and it's bothering you. Does this make any sense to what I'm saying? Okay. Well, I think you you shared something with me the other day that I think this might be, and yeah. I would just say that it's I I understand your Angst. lack of peace stems at its root from how much you love and care for right what's attached to this right. situation and it but, so that's a good thing but i can't the trust prioritize of, the tr it. no the trust part of handing it over yeah we want to steer results that's the hard <laughs> oh, part is when we can't steer the results that's a really good bruce and um it's easy for you to to do that because you know the situation and it's a situation that I know it's going to work itself out because it's already started to work itself out. But it, I just get mad at myself. Like, I'm, I'm, how many times any of you out there or Bruce, you know, you and I certainly know each other very well and know pretty much almost everything about each other's lives. But how many times have you looked yourself in the mirror and, and told you, snap out of this? Mm. What are you doing? You know, this. You, you got to get out of this yeah. and you and you're almost like stuck i think the the hard part of me handing over something to god yeah. when i'm really want to be in control of the result cuz i love the other person that i want to see so something much, good right, happen right. for and i know what they've invested and i know and i really want it to happen and it's not happening and i can't make sense of why it's the essence of everybody's struggle, I think, in coming to faith, and that is who's in control. Yeah. You know, I I love to say <laughs> God is in control, but then there are some things that I just think, yeah, yeah, let me take that off your plate. I'll take care yeah. of this one. Let me, you know, here, don't don't even devote any thought to this, Lord. Like just do it this way. And and what that is is I'm convicted that with me, that's my faith challenge i don't struggle to believe that jesus no, came to earth and no, forgave no, me of my no, sin no. and stuff like that. some people really struggle with that they want to be in control of everything in their life and all that as people who have long ago settled that surrender and and understand that we can't ever qualify in our own good deeds for heaven we don't struggle with that aspect of faith what i struggle with in that in faith is those things that involve people I love, people That's, I care about, will I truly hand that over and trust? Yeah. That's my struggle. Some people never make the first step. They never trust their eternal destiny to Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. It's a battle. It's I mean, a battle. And, it, the, and the battle is a real battle because I was facing discouragement this week. There was I did a radio show one day and there were no callers. And I thought, maybe my show sucks. Like maybe my show's no good. Like maybe I'm not reaching anybody, and maybe nobody's listening. And nah, nah, nah. and I told Cherry that, and she's like, "That is what Satan wants you to think. You're there for a reason. God put you there. You have a mission there. You view your job there as your mission. So don't listen to the discouragement." Mm -hmm. And so I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that, and I hopefully you needed to hear that. I get why you're struggling. M maybe it's easier. Maybe it's not easier to understand that the reason you're struggling is because you love the other person so much and you want to steer the results. Yeah. And sometimes we can't. Yeah. That helps. Um, it was funny. Not funny. Oh, shoot. I had a verse. That the day I was really, really struggling with this issue, I get these verses that pop up mm -hmm. on my phone because I, I want to be constantly reminded. Right. And it was a verse and it was put into not verse form, but it was. Um, keep your head up. God gives battles to his strong shoulder or soldiers, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And. That was encouraging for me. But it's amazing. Like, I, I remember marking that moment because I needed to hear that. And for whatever reason, random pop up, I get them all the time, yeah. random pop up verse. And, and it has given me a little peace. And uh, my the biggest 
thing people can pray for me for and that I struggle with. You're you're better at this this than I am right now. I don't, I'm not going to say you were, but I had this conversation with Carrie the other night. My biggest battle, and it's just how I'm made, and it was a blessing in certain areas, and it's a curse in other areas. And it doesn't seem like a big thing, but it's patience. I have zero patience. I want I want answers. Mm-hmm. I want them now. I, I my whole thing is I can't stand living in the what if world waiting yeah what if world is just brutal to me and it seems like i've lived half my life yeah. in the what if world which i don't <laughs> which i've actually you know we talk about paul and you know this the thorn in my side the what if world is the thorn in my side and i gotta stop playing the what if game i'm very good at telling people mm. <laughs> very good at telling people how to not play the what if game very good i mean i can motivate and pump somebody up about that and give the speech of a lifetime but you want to talk about one of the three biggest challenges in my life and if anybody that's listening to this or does listen if you pray pray to help chris get out of the what if world so i because i play it all the time and it's exhausting yeah. and it affects me um how i sleep how i eat and i hate it i hate that about myself i don't hate myself i hate that yeah that's right and it you know as you know it's sure. convicting and i and i don't know how to get out of it sometimes well it's struggle yeah it will always be a struggle and i only share that with everybody because i believe in being completely yeah. honest with you completely transparent and telling you because i know i'm not the only person that lives in the what if world mm-hmm. uh that you're not alone and my struggle is your struggle so yeah. yeah absolutely we've all been there i think everybody can identify with that thanks for sharing that thanks for joining us on a wednesday edition of the spielman and Hooli we tackle live podcast keep those COVID 19 nominations coming we had uh, four today, four winners, and they came from b- a bunch of different months. So we'll keep your name in until it's drawn. So no need to nominate twice, but we thank you for doing that. We'd appreciate a review on iTunes, and we'd appreciate you uh, interacting with us via email, Podcast at gmail.com. Everybody have a great week.